happy new year my good friends thank you thank you for joining in on the first episode of finance friday of 2023 i'm really really happy to have you here i know i have been off of this platform for a minute now i took a bit of a break to just rest and reset and i'm really really excited to be back i don't know how your year has started i'm really curious to know if you've already set your financial goals if you haven't please do we are already towards uh, we're already at the end of january it is very very important to just hit the ground running start early and if you've already set your financial goals please let me know in the comment section down below what your financial just one one financial goal that you are intentional in achieving in the year 2023 now this is our first finance friday episode this year and i thought i could make it short and sweet i want to talk to you guys about six simple steps that you can use to successfully set up an emergency fund in 2023 you guys know i'm passionate about emergency funds you know i'm always like if you if you get your first um, paycheck, the first thing you might want to do is actually set up an emergency fund. These things are saving lives every day with job losses and recession and, um, you know, things not always going as planned. It is This is the most important thing that you can do for yourself financially. And I thought we've talked about, uh, we've talked about these emergency funds a lot last year. So I thought let's just do a very simple step-by-step -step guide on how you can set up an emergency emergency fund in 2023. My name is Coach Susan. Let's get into it. Start by defining exactly what an emergency fund is. An emergency fund is an account where you've saved up a minimum of up to six months of your total living expenses. And the purpose of this fund is to provide a cushion in the case of an emergency such as you losing your job or even your ability to make an income either due to a long-term illness or just life happening. Sometimes it is things like a long-term illness that happened to someone close to you that caused you to liquidate all of your money or all of your investments and now you need a buffer. Most financial planners will recommend at least 6 to 12 months and the reason why we recommend that is because we are looking at how long or rather how long would it take me to get a new job in the case that I lose my job. We've heard of cases where you you know someone could get a job in 4 months and others have even had to wait up to 2 years to get another job. But for a start I personally recommend that you start with something as simple as building uh, three months worth of expenses. When you hit that goal, you can build on to six months worth of living expenses, nine months until you hit the 12 months mark. So that is ideally what an emergency fund is. When should you set up an emergency fund? Immediately, yesterday. <laughs> The first day you got your first paycheck, that is how important it is to have an emergency fund immediately before you start any form of investing or before you get into other really more demanding financial commitments. We always recommend that you start your uh, journey to financial freedom with setting up and consistently funding an emergency fund. Now that we have defined what that is, I'd like to take you through six things that I think would be in instrumental to help you to successfully build an emergency fund in 2023. So the first thing that you need to do is to set a target for your emergency funds. We don't have a blanket amount where we can say that um, you need 100,000 or 500,000 or a million. The target of your emergency fund is heavily reliant on your monthly expenses. So how do you set a target? The first thing you need to do is to definitely do a budget and figure out exactly what your total 
and um, monthly expenses are. So if I spend 60,000 every month, then if I want to set a target for six months, my emergency fund target will be 60,000 times six months, which equals 360,000. So that is what I'd be, I mean, I'd be after, I'd be like, okay, if I have a fully funded six months emergency fund, then the account needs to have 360,000. If you spend 100,000 per month, you need to actually in uh, multiply that by six and you can you you can see that for someone who spends 100k your emergency fund target for six months should be roughly around 600,000 now what should be included in that calculation what do we consider our total uh, living expenses now because I would rather have more money than less money I take into consideration my needs and my wants and if I have debt, and you have to pay monthly expenses. You include the figure that you must pay every month in that calculation. Because remember, we are working with an assumption that if I lost my job today, my creditor, if that's a bank, uh, a mobile lender or a circle, they would not necessarily care so much that I've lost my job and tell me, oh, okay, don't pay us back until you get a job. You're still expected to make your monthly payments on the car loan or on the mortgage. You're still expected to pay things like school fees, to still have money for food, transport, and all that. So I always love to tell people that my recommendation has always been that there is no such thing as an overestimation. I love to take into consideration both my needs and my wants. And if at all I have any uh, debt obligations, I also include that in the total calculation of how much I spend every month. Once you get that figure, just multiply it by six if your target is six months or multiply it by 12 if you want to jump in the deep end and just start building a 12 months emergency fund from the go. So that is exactly how you set your overall target. Now, you also need to set a monthly target. What is a monthly target? Now that I know I need to raise 600,000. I want to ask myself, how long do I want to give myself to raise that same amount of money? Okay, now I, I took around four years to build my first six months emergency fund. So it's not something unless you're really, really liquid. It's not always something that you can achieve in one year uh, because I mean, if I want to raise 600,000 in 12 months, um, you know, the figure could be, it could be something that I'm not able to raise on a monthly basis. So I always recommend start with um, maybe three years and say, okay, if I want to raise X amount of money in the next 36 months, then how much do I need to contribute every month? So take your 600,000 divided by 36 months, and then you can get the exact figure you need to contribute every month to um, get to your goal of 600,000, which would be your first six months emergency fund so that's the first step you must work with targets i always love to tell people that as much as you can just wake up one day and decide i'll put five thousand or ten thousand every month i feel like it helps to uh, be better targeted with your goals if you can just uh, do the math that we've just talked about and ensure that your savings are more goal-based and goal-oriented as opposed to just guessing a figure and deciding that's how much you will be contributing. The only way to know that you're contributing enough is to work through that target process that we've just talked about. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you need to realize when you're building your emergency fund is that it is okay to start low. All right? When I first did the math, I got very intimidated. I'm pretty sure if you've paused this video and you've done the calculation of how much you need to contribute every month, some are encouraged, but I also know there's a whole lot of people that are discouraged and feeling like this is not practical for me right now. I cannot raise 17,000 every month or 12,000 every month. The question then is, if you can't raise 15,000 every month or however much you've gotten in your calculation every month, how much can you raise? Yeah, I paused because I want you to ask yourself that. How much can you raise? 
So I need you to understand that in order for you to successfully start and, and build consistently, you need to give yourself the permission to start low. So when I first did my math, it was also an absurd figure because I only earned like 40,000 shillings gross. When we come to net, it's even lesser. And, and so I asked myself, what can I do with what I have right now? And so what I could do was 2,500. So it's okay for you to have that big target. And if you can't meet it, it doesn't mean that your goal is unrealistic. It just means that you need to start low. So it's okay if you can't raise 10,000, 15,000, ask yourself, what can I start with right now that I know I'm comfortable and start with that. So that's the second thing I need you to know. It's okay to start low. The third thing that I need you to know is that you must start now. Okay. I've been telling people time and time again that the worst thing that you can ever do to your financial wellness and, 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 and health is to be lazy about it and to be a procrastinator about it. If 2022 ended with you saying that I'll build an emergency fund, I'll build an emergency fund and it didn't happen, please don't let that be your story in 2023. Start now, go right ahead, set up a, a money market fund. I always recommend a money market fund. If you have if you have no idea what that is, I bet you are a new subscriber. So I'm going to put um, a link. I've talked about money market funds in the description box. You can watch and find out what money market funds are. But I always recommend uh, setting an emergency fund in your money market fund because you're saving while your savings are also earning you an interest. So go right. I mean, go right ahead watch the video if you don't already know what a money market fund is towards the end of that video i've given a couple of money market fund recommendations that you can use and that i recommend um and just set it up immediately you just need to fill the form give them your documents your id your kre pin certificate um and probably a passport photo and that's it they open your account within maybe two to four working days and you can start funding your account so it's okay to start low and you need to start now. Okay, go ahead, set up an emergent or rather a, a, a money market fund. You can do it with CIC money market fund, Zimele money market fund, Sanlam money market fund, the ICA money market fund, or even Nabo Capital. We have, those are already five that you can do your due diligence on and choose one that would work for you. So start now, start immediately. Do not procrastinate setting up your emergency fund. The fourth thing that I would want you to also have in mind is to build upwards. Remember that we set a particular target. If you already have been able to meet that target from the word go, good for you. In fact, when you earn more, do, um, contribute even more into your emergency fund. It might take you a lesser period of time than what you had anticipated. You would, uh, however long you had anticipated, you will take to set up your emergency fund. However, if you started low, Keep increasing your contributions every free, every few months until you actually hit that monthly target. So let's assume your monthly target is 10,000 per month, but you've started at 2,500. You keep doing the 2,500, but be intentional to build upwards. So after every few months, see how you can contribute more. So move to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. What, as long as your mind is intentional to do that and you're looking of ways to either cut down on some unnecessary spending or increase your income so that you can be able to meet your target, keep building upwards. You will see the benefits and the results after one year is over. You'll see, oh, at the beginning of 2023... I didn't have an emergency fund and now it's December 2023 and I have X amount of money on the bare minimum. Some stuff can come up and I will have something, even if it's not the entire six months, I will have something that I can fall back on and be like, okay, this can last me a month or two months as I figure myself out. The fifth thing, give it time. I, I earlier on mentioned it, it took me four years 
to build an emergency fund. And I know we all want quick um, suggestions and quick things and getting rich quickly. I, I mean, I also have the urge to just get it done real quick, but building sustainably, especially when it comes to finances, it takes time and it takes consistency. Give it time. Even as you're putting your money in the money market funds and wondering why isn't my interest crazy? No, give it time. Compound interest is a, a factor of time. Allow your efforts to compound, allow your money to compound, allow yourself the space to even build upwards and to keep increasing your contributions. In two to three years, you will see a very big difference. So give it time. You need to com commit to a long-term uh, view of your finances. And, and that's the best thing that happened to me. I find that my clients and some people, um, other people that I've interacted with, and even myself, we tend to get discouraged when we are trying to move too fast. And I know like something like an emergency fund has a particular sense of urgency, but come on. There's really nothing you can do if you are operating under panic and pressure. Okay, so just just allow yourself that space to kind of like build and, and, and to work on, even if you don't have one right now and you feel like this is an emergency, if you have a lump sum, well and good. But if you don't have one, just give it time and allow your efforts to compound. It is very, very important to not pressure yourself to get in one million right away. You will look at, at this goal as if it is unrealistic, yet it isn't. If you learn to give it time to be patient with your efforts and to allow them to compound, then the goal starts looking like it's achievable we can reach it and it's not making me um feel like i am completely um not up to task when it comes to building my emergency fund finally put some respect on your emergency fund once you've started putting money aside and you've started building your emergency fund, you need to come up with a list of things that merit a withdrawal from that account. Not every small inconvenience merits me withdrawing money from my emergency fund. So have a list. Like mine is very simple. The only time I withdraw money from my emergency fund is if I've lost my job or my income or my ability to uh, make an income or someone is in hospital and we need to get them out or someone died. Okay, that is exactly, those are the four instances and cases that I would liquidate money from my emergency fund. The rest of the other things have their own specific accounts. Like I have an account where if you are a car owner, you know cars are crazy. They just wake up one day, they make a funny noise and you have to spend 30,000. So something like that is saved in like a sinking fund. And I've talked about sinking funds before on this channel. I'll also link the video down below. Um, and so like my car has a sinking fund, uh, travel, school fees and things like those have should have their own individual account where you're accumulating money for those things. And yo, listen, I already know there's someone watching me right now who's like, Susan, how many savings accounts should we have with this limited income that we earn? I mean, it's all about budgeting. It's all about trying to see how you can distribute what you earn to all these important buckets. I call them baskets or buckets, okay? So, you know, there's an emergency fund basket, a sinking fund basket, a spending basket, and an investing basket. And if you have debt, you have a fifth basket, which is now money going towards debt repayment. So it's it's all about planning for your money. And, and that forces me to live within my means because my money can't just be for spending only. There are so many other things that require my attention. So... Back to what I was saying, put some respect on your emergency fund. Like, And I've also come to appreciate the fact that other people's emergencies are not my emergencies. So I don't like if I liquidate money from my emergency fund, it's really burning, guys. Like things are it's, it's not good. So it's it's my last resort account. It's not the account that I will always go to fast when I experience an inconvenience. So I've found that you're able to sustain it longer. You're able to build it faster when you respect your emergency fund. Don't just withdraw money from it anyhow. Have a list of things like an approval process. Does this thing check these boxes? Is it, have I lost my job? Don't we have rent this month? Or is someone like a parent or a spouse or a child in hospital? 
that's what merits for instance withdrawal from my emergency fund so put some respect on it it's going to take you a long way. Now, there are three questions that I every time I talk about emergency funds, people ask me these three questions and I'd like to run through them real quick as we wrap up. The first question is, what if I am deep in debt? Is an emergency fund a priority? Shouldn't I just first of all finish paying off my loans and then once I'm done, then I can start building my emergency fund? Mm -mm -mm. No, sorry. No, honey. <laughs> Let me explain to you why that might not be a very good strategy. In the process of paying off your debt, if an emergency comes up, you will sink deeper into debt because you have to take out a loan to now meet this emergency that came up because you did not have an emergency fund or you didn't have any savings. So find a way to actually both pay for your debt and fund your emergency fund. And for the longest time, especially like in 2019, I had a lot of debt um, and that's all I did. I was not investing. I just, whatever money I had left after my necessities, I separated some. Some would go towards my circle loan um, and my help loan and then the rest would go towards my emergency fund. So find a way to do both of those things. Whether that will mean increase your sources of income or cut down on expenses, these two things are equally important build your emergency fund whether you have loans or not it is a priority the second question i get is susan shouldn't i invest first in fact i can just invest and then the passive income from my investments could be helping me in case an emergency comes up no sorry again <laughs> whoever taught me that no sorry um gosh anyway so what should you do? Should you invest first? No. Save first, then start investing. Why? We are not always sure, at least not 100% sure, that our investments are actually going to pay off. Sometimes things go south. I mean, in Kenya especially, things go south. Okay, so having an emergency fund before you actively start investing gives you a reliable safety net such that even if my investments does not, my investment doesn't work out as I had planned for it to work out or if the money doesn't come when I expected it, I still have a fallback plan. So put aside an emergency fund first before you start actively investing precisely because you're not always sure that your investments will work out the way you've anticipated. There's always an element of risk that is associated with investing, which is why I always recommend start with building an emergency fund first, then work your way up towards investing. Finally, Susan, what if I do not have an income? What if I do not make enough? Like I am being serious right now. There are people who uh, they don't have luxuries like all your money goes to is necessities and it's over there's nothing left and you've not even spent on any luxury i would not i would not prioritize building an emergency fund right now because you cannot you can't save money that you don't have so if i were you and i'm not i know i'm not wasting i know there's no wastage or luxury happening all my money is going towards needs and it's over my priority would be to one understand where I am right now and to focus on finding and growing a source of income. That should be your priority. How can I raise more money or rather how can I make more money? Because you do not have a, a, a spending problem in this case. You have an income problem. So before you build an emergency fund, you need to find, first of all increase or find a new source of income that would give you extra money to uh, not only cater to your necessities, but to also put towards your emergency fund. So I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know in the comment section if you found it helpful. Um, I'm very, very intentional in um, talking about this this year and sensitizing, especially a lot of my fellow Kenyans. I know I have other people watching me from outside, but especially if you are a Kenyan, You've seen what's happening with taxes. You've seen what's happening with uh, job losses and the recession. 
the most important thing you can have in 2023 is an emergency fund. It will really, really, really help us to stay afloat. So prioritize this. And I do offer consultation and coaching with regards to budgeting and working towards building that. If you would like to work with me as your finance coach in 2023, I will put a link down in the description box to actually book a session with me and come so that we can work together to set some of these things up. If you do not already have a budget, there's a budget linked down below, a budget tracker that goes for only 750 shillings. Please grab it, do your budget, then use that data to be able to set your target for your emergency fund, okay? And finally, if you would like to donate to the work that I do, I have introduced a button also in the description box, you could always support the work that I do in terms of creating a financial literacy awareness, whether that is on this platform or on my Instagram page. You could also support me in that way. And I've also put the link down below. Bottom line, remember to like this video, share it with your friends so that they can also be as woke as we are and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.